Alright guys, this is Dokraft, and welcome to my first ever tank review, and today we're taking a look at the Cromwell, the tier 6 British medium tank. In this video, I'm going to showcase just what the Cromwell is all about. This vehicle has insane good mobility, and a very high DPM, so stay tuned if you want to know more about this vehicle. This might be an excellent tank for you. This is the ultimate medium tank to start with to learn play with medium tanks. In this video I will be yeah, featuring a few of its stats and also its armor and we will be taking a look into a replay of mine. So I have to say let's get started. Okay guys so let's first take a look at the gun of the Cromwell. As you can see the Cromwell gets a 75mm Vickers HV gun. The gun is the same mounted on the Churchill 1, the Churchill 7 and the Comet. It has armor piercing shells, armor piercing composite ridge and high explosive. This is a sort of, um, yeah this is the gold ammo, A, B, C, R, the gold ammo, oh, I don't have to click it away. As you can see this gun is 75 millimeters. It fires a 50.4 rounds a minute. That's absolutely insane. The average penetration is 145 on the standard armor piercing shells, 202 on the APCR, the gold, and only 38 on the high explosive shells. The average damage is 135 at AP and armor piercing shells. The damage at the high explosive is only 175, which is quite disappointing in my opinion. I would expect for this low, such a low amount of high explosive shells, there would be a little bit more damage. So, actually the conclusion is, don't take any high explosive shells with you. You could just um, yeah, shoot with AP and armor piercing. The only way when you shoot fire high explosive, maybe when you are engaging a high tier target which you can't penetrate to shoot at least one or two gold shells of, um, excuse me, high explosive shells to it to make some damage. The accuracy is 0 0.36, that is also not quite bad. It could be worse, but as you can see the aim time is okay it's not particularly long but it's also not particularly fast that means that um, yeah how longer you'll aim how more accurate the gun will be and I think that the accuracy is much better when you have fully aimed your shots that's also what you're gonna see in this replay the shot will always go straight when you have fully aimed so then the accuracy actually doesn't make that more sense anymore. Yeah, the weight's not such a big deal. That only counts for when you want to know how much weight you need to get for the tracks. But that's it for the gun. So let's now take a look at the armor of this vehicle. Okay guys, now take a look at the tank inspector screen. As you can see, for the armor of the Cranwell, I have put us into Tank Inspector, which is a really nice program where you can see all the armor stats, all the spaced armor. You can even light up the armor itself, as you can see. So let's take a look at it. First of all, the turret. The turret is the best armored on this tank, but it is not very impressive. Only 76 millimeters on the front of the tank. And 64 millimeters on the side of the turret and on the back it's 57 millimeters this is the thickest part of the tank which is not very impressive because most guns on this tier have got such a high penetration let's try it with a no let's try it with the Cromwell gun the 75 millimeter is easily capable of penetrating the turret as you can see right here there's no yeah, actually hard part to pen it. As you can see when the turret is angled, it's also really nicely penetrated everywhere. So, yeah, the turret is not very good armored. The hull is also not really good armored. The biggest part is here, this right up standing part. As you can see this 
sort of compiler or viewports or machine gun port is the thickest part of the front. Oh no, it's not. It's the thinnest. So this is a weak spot as well. Would you have less than um, 64 penetration? You can always go for these fuel ports or the gun ports at this place. This play, this yeah, piece of metal is also only 75 millimeters. This is really disappointing. Only 25. Even engaged from the front, this is only 36, 37 millimeters. Not very impressive. Lower plate, which is almost impossible to hit with an aimed shot, is 35, 45 millimeters. So that's also not really impressive. The side armor has a bit of spaced armor, which makes it just a bit better, as you can see. You can expect to bounce a lot of shots on the side of the tank in the spaced armor. So would you need to bounce a shot when you are moving? Try to make a dodge to the left. And make the shot get absorbed by your tracks as you can see right here but the weak spot is also above the tracks there's almost no spaced armor as you can see at this point there's no spaced armor here's a little bit of spaced armor which can absorb some shots but i won't expect too much from it so the back is absolutely horrible it has no armor at all for the rest so I had to say, let's now yeah, get over to the replay. Time to roll out. All right, guys. As you can see, we're driving on Miron Vanka. It's a 58% wind chance, and I am going off towards the two line of this map. I think that the Cromwell can be very good at hills, but the gun depression is not very good, which I forgot to mention in the garage. So keep that in mind, the gun depression is not very good, but its mobility makes up for it. So let's take a look. I am going uphill and I am going to stop behind this bush. And that is to try to make spots on the enemy without getting spotted myself. And I know that there is a second bush, as you can see right here, which also prevents me from spotting again. So... The chance of me getting spotted is really low. As you can see T28 is standing next to me which is not very smart of him. As you can see the very nice turret reverse on this tank which I also forgot to mention. But this tank is highly mobile, just keep that in mind. And I'm waiting for spots to get off. I'm looking at the map a bit to see where my team is going and what is going to happen around me. I am pre-aimed on the hill back there to see if there's enemy, yeah, any enemy stupid enough to drive forward and get spotted in the open. But it is not the case at this moment. And the first enemy got spotted, a Churchill 7. Don't have a shot on him. I look to see where he's going and he is going off towards the left part of the map. And this could be dangerous for me. He could get me spotted so I'm keeping an eye out on him. But there's a few tanks standing next to me, so I, yeah, stay hidden. And those guys take him out. I didn't want to move. I didn't want to spend any shots. And there's the Churchill 7. And now I have to think. Enemy armor is hit. I think, let's put one shot in. And now I'm certainly spotted. And the BDR blocks me. So I have to go forward. So I try, yeah, I think by myself, let's flank around. But there's always some enemies. Yep, there we go. It's always some enemies camping, but unfortunately it's just a T-28. There's the first enemy tank which I spotted. It's a T-1 Heavy. Beautiful side shots. But fortunately I didn't took a strike off as you could see. I didn't fully aim my shots and the shell went a little bit towards the right. But in my opinion you don't always have the chance to fully aim your shots. Oh, and as you can see now, this is really interesting. I was going backwards and forwards towards the guy to make him dodge the shot. So it would be very hard for him to hit me, actually. As you can see, the shot fully missed me, and I just kept driving forwards and backwards to avoid the shots. Which made it very hard for him to penetrate or to even hit me. Enemy is hit. And that is a really good example of taking your mobility, making up for your less armor. And now, let me quickly showcase it. There's a T28 behind me. 
he decided to ambush me, but that's all right. I'll just turn my tank around, and I will take some damage. This thing doesn't have the insane good armor. And as you can see, I am trying to keep my spaced armor, as you can see, towards him. To make him look like it's easier to hit, so he won't aim at my very weak, weak frontal armor or my very weak turret armor. He is hitting my tracks at this moment, which makes some shots absorb. And he misses his shots. And he got taken out. But now, the T-28 gave me gave the enemy a perfect opportunity to flank around to get me. So I fall by myself. Let's get out of there. I won't stay. T-1 Heavy, can I absorb a shot? No, unfortunately not. I take one shot. But that doesn't really matter. I can drive away because of my great mobility. And right now we are looking at the stands and it is 6-9 for the enemy. They're standing three tanks above us. And I think this flank needs help. So I am rushing over towards this flank because I will yeah, take care of the other flank later on. I will use my mobility for that. So I didn't worry about that at all. And it's an encounter battle. So it takes the enemy 200 seconds to cap, which is too long for me to make. Actually, I can easily make it towards the base. And now there's an M6, which I want to kill first. Much more valuable target. And now I go stand behind. Yeah, actually next to the tank destroyer. So he won't be able to turn his tracks or his gun towards me. And I take him out. So now the score evened up a bit. It's 10-10. As you can see the T1 Heavy rushed back towards his spawn point. To defend the artillery and a AFK T40. I guess he's AFK. Take a shot at the artillery. We've them. There you go. As you can see fully aimed my shot and it went nicely to the front. And now the cap is... Yeah, being capped, but I don't really care because it takes the enemy three minutes to cap. And that's the Churchill 7, which is a very, very good yeah, tank. So it's really, really well armored. And as you can see, he's a good player as well. So I have to watch out for him. I want to try to flank him because I won't be able to pen him frontally. And that KV-1 certainly needs help. So I'm going to stand back here. As you can see, there's a bush between me and the Churchill 7. So it makes it harder for him to spot me. And I can just unload on him with my crazy we sick DPM. It hit the, the turret there. Other shots. Enemy armor destroyed. And he is dead as well. And now we are going to help our teammates because... Oh, the KV-1 is unfortunately... Oh no, he's not no, saved, unfortunately, quiet. but the Churchill 7 is dead, which is really nice for me. And now I'm going to help out my teammate. Oh, by the way, big shout out to you, X Peter L. I don't really know how to pronounce your name, but I have Enemy talked to him. He is really... I will, I will tell this after the battle because Enemy I have to highlight turn. this stuff first. Well, see, as you can see, I'm loading on this T1 Heavy. He's not able to shoot at me because I was really nicely covered behind that hill. And he only wants to take out my teammate, which is behind the building right now. So it's almost impossible for him to, to kill him. But he unfortunately got to turn his turret precisely on time and put a nice shot in there. So now I have to watch out. There's one KV-1 left. He didn't play a lot of games, but I am a one-shot for him. At least if he has the good gun, of course. But if he doesn't have the good gun, he will more easily kill him. So it's more unfortunate for me that he has the stock gun. If he had the stock gun, then it would be even harder for me to win this game. And there we go, that's the KV-1, but let me highlight this. I didn't engage him. Because I want to know where he was. And I know. I knew that I was a one shot. So I first wanted to get out of that situation. 
I know where he was, so I can start to make another engagement on him. But I first wanted to make sure that I was safe. So now, trying to get side shots on the KV-1. He unfortunately is good health. And Mr. X Peter L is helping me out really well. He is keeping him spotted so I can unload on him. As you can see, flank towards me. Enemy really hit. nice of him. I wanted to stay actually to take another shot into him, but I got too greedy and I didn't want to take the risk that he was going to kill me. Mr. Peter in his Panzer 38 NA is still keeping him spotted. He distracts him so I could take another chance to aim at him, but he turned this turret precisely on time. So I didn't want to risk that again. And I knew that if I was dead, I, uh, yeah, the game was going to be a loss. So now I'm driving backwards here to try and make another engagement on him, but that unfortunately cost my teammate his life. So now I have to be extremely lucky and now I want to get away from him. To make it look that I am going this way, as you can see, and as you can see I am going to turn left here. And Mr. Peter or Piter, I sorry mate, I don't, I can't really pronounce your name, but I hope I can give you the credits you deserve in this game. But as you can see I am driving around him. And Mr. Piter is going to help me a lot in this game. He's going to tell his position, going to tell what gun is he on, which side he is facing. But as you can see, I spotted him, but he's too close to me. I want to get away from him again. I want to get the jump on the enemy, but he now caught the jump on me. So I first wanted to get out of that situation. I had to get the hell out of there. This was a bit risky to get between the buildings. He might have took a shot at me. But as you can see, he's now driving towards the cap. And I am planning to try to make an ambush on him using the bushes in the forest on the 9 and 8 line of this map. As you can see, Mr. Piter is telling me exactly what he thinks is gonna happen. And I, yeah, think the same as he does. So that's really nice that he tells me and helps me getting win the game. So I'm now using those bushes on this, on E8 to get the jump on him. But... The cap bar tells me enough. I know where he is now. So let's make the enorm good mobility to use. Try to engage him. He is on 436 health. As you can see at the hit points left bar. At the top of my screen. Also the damage is really high. I've built it up until 2090 damage. As you can see I'm now trying to make a side ambush on him because I think that he is going to be in this corner here but I'm not certainly sure so that's why I first want to make him get spotted. I first want to know where he is before I can make a proper engagement on him. So let's see if no spot from this side so now I am going around okay no spot on this side so let's try to spot him at this side of the map there he is I aim but unfortunately the shot bounces but at least I know where he is so I can start to make an ambush on him He's unspotted now, I'm unspotted as well, and that means he cannot see me anymore. And he saw me driving um, yeah, towards the B and A line, so he may think that I am driving towards the A and B line, 
but at that point when I got on Spotted, I turned my tank around so he should not know that I have gone this way. And I know that he is still there and he is facing a side towards me. And I'm taking a blind shot at him because I want to reset the cap. And it connects. Really nice, really good for me there. So now I have to plan another engagement because he now knows that I am on this side of the map. So I now want to put the great mobility to use again to relocate and try to get a shot on him from the other side of the map. Yeah, from the hill. And as you can see, Mr. Piter is telling me here that I've got two minutes still. So it's really nice that he is helping me there to remind me about the time that I've got to kill this KV-1. Oh, and unfortunately, he got me spotted there. So he knows that I'm going this way. And I knew that at that point. So I have to think about, should I make another engagement from another angle? Or should I just try this? And as you can see, I'm not going that way anymore. Because he knew that I was driving that way. So now I'm trying to engage him from another side, which he hopefully doesn't expect. So I had to get him spotted. I'm behind some bushes, so that should be effective for me. And also the wreck of the T28 is there to provide me some cover. And there he is. The sight is shown to me with a nice shot into him. And now he's only down to a two-shot kill or a one high-roll shot kill. So he got him spotted again. I turned the tank, put the mobility to use again and relocate again. As you can see, I've only got only 50 seconds remaining to kill this guy. But it's enough. And I also knew that he has gone out of the cap circle. Because the capture bar is not going up here. I'm taking a bit of a risk here to peek out and see where he is. Because I want to know where he left the cap circle. And he's certainly not around the cap circle anymore. Because the capture bar is yeah, stopped for at least 10 20 seconds and he's trying to ambush me peter reminds me so that's really nice to know and there he is Permission to engage. i changed we the engagement totally we didn't even scratch and bounced. that was a really bad shot actually Enemy vehicle destroyed. and there you go that is the win it got me a nice top gun medal and as you can see this is a perfect result in the Cromwell where you got to see it's DPM, you got to see it's great mobility and that's just all where the Cromwell is all about with just two seconds on the clock remaining so that was a really good result for me so now let's take a look at the post game stats okay guys here are the stats of the game we just played as you can see, we got an absolute monster amount of experience, 2,392 for our double. This in fact was a mastery badge in the Cromwell, and we have made 21,182.3 uh, credits profit, yes. We have done 2,526 damage, 6 kills giving us a nice top gun medal. And we got over 1196 base experience. So that is the amount of experience kind of you need to get a mastery badge in the Cromwell. This was not my first mastery badge though, this was the second one, but it was a nice game. We have fired 33 shots, of which only 24 penetrated. Well, only 24. 24 was really nice. We have got a Defender Medal, we got that when we have blind fired the KV-1 and got a nice Defender Medal out of that. We have taken 9 shots of which 8 penetrated, so that is just a, yeah, evidence how bad the armor on the Cromwell is. We have destroyed 7 of the 6 vehicles which we engaged and we have traveled over almost 7.7 .7 kilometers in that game and that just shows how good the mobility on the Cromwell is 
Well guys, I hope you've liked the first ever tank review that I've made. I've put a lot of time into it, so please leave a like. It helps me out a lot. It gives me a notification that people are liking the episodes that I make. Oh, and for the last, I want to give a big shout out to Mr. Pyder. You helped me out very good in that battle. So, big shout out to you. I even made some screen prints of our conversation. I will, they are now running through your screen if you want to check them out. You can just read them. He's very nice. Not all World of Tanks players are horrible players. There are humans as well and there are always some nice guys out there. But you just first have to meet them. Well guys, that was the first ever tank review. Hope you liked it. See ya.